Welcome to this next video in the communication topic. This video is going to look at the beginning of focus area three, which is the clarity of the signal transferred can affect the interpretation of the intended visual communication. In order for a visual signal to be interpreted, it must reach the photoreceptor cells at the back of the eye in a clear and precise form. It is transferred in the form of reflected, transmitted or generated light from the environment outside the eye through the transparent layers of the eye to the retina at the back of the eye where a focused image should fall on the rods and cones. To achieve this, the eye has transparent structures that must be maintained to perform their function of refracting light to the correct degree so that the image can ultimately that it, sorry, that ultimately reaches the retina is clear and in focus. So we're going to start off by looking at these two dot points, identify the conditions under which refraction of light occurs, and identify the cornea, aqueous humor, lens, and vitreous humor as refractive media. If you have ever tried to spear a fish in shallow water while standing on the beach or on a river bank, you will know how difficult it is to pinpoint accurately the exact position of the fish. The fish that is actually seen is an image, that is, reflected light that reaches your eye. In order to be seen, an object either reflects light, generates its own light, or transmits light to our eyes. The fish image that is seen is light that has been reflected through water, air, and then through your eyes. When light moves from one substance or medium such as water to another medium such as air, it is bent or refracted. This leads to a distortion of the image that you see, making it difficult to judge the exact location of the object of which you are looking at. Conditions under which refraction of light occurs. So this is looking at how light refracts. So when light passes from one medium to another, with a different density, the speed of which the light is traveling changes. As a result of the light speeding up or slowing down, the rays are bent or refracted. When you place a straw into a glass, it appears to bend. This distortion in the image is brought about by the manner in which the light reflected off the straw is being refracted. Light travels more slowly through water at the bottom of the jar and more quickly through the air at the top. Because movement of light in the denser medium is slower, it is refracted to a greater degree than the light that is traveling through the air. When light is passed through a biconvex lens, like this one here on the screen, the rays are refracted towards a central point known as the focal point. The rays then cross and diverge or spread out from one another from that point. If a screen is placed at a point in the pathway of the diverging light, the diverging ray, sorry, an image will land on the screen. The screen could be moved backwards and forwards until the image is clear and precise. The rays are said to then be in focus. If the image that falls on the screen appears blurred or is out of focus, this is because the focused image is falling either in front of the lens, or the screen, sorry, or behind the screen. It is interesting to note that the resulting image that forms, once the rays have been crossed over, is upside down or inverted, and we will be having a look at this in an investigation in class. There's a number of different refractive medium that are found in the eye. The density of the cornea, aqueous humor, lens, and vitreous humor are all similar to each other and close to that of water. All of these structures refract light that passes through the eye to a greater or lesser extent. The refractive power of the air, however, through which light travels to reach the eye in terrestrial mammals is quite different and much lower than the refractive power of the parts of the eye. Therefore, the greatest degree of refraction in the human eye occurs when light moves from the surrounding air into the cornea of the eye, since the change in refractive power of the media is the greatest at this point. The greater the difference in the refractive power of two media, the more the light is refracted when it passes from one medium to another. The lens is an interesting refractive structure in the eye as it is able to refract light to a greater or lesser degree by altering its shape. This is termed accommodation and is useful in allowing the eye to adjust for near or far distant or sorry near or distant vision. This is uh, the lens consists mainly of living protein fibers called crystallins housed in a lens capsule. These proteins are folded in a particular way to make them transparent. The overall shape of the lens, or the degree to which it is curved, determines the degree to which the light can be refracted. And we'll be having a look at this in class when we do a first-hand investigation looking at accommodation, 
And we'll also be looking at how the lens is able to change its shape in a range of different ways using the, uh, the muscles of the ciliary body in order to allow us to focus on objects that are near or far. Welcome to the next video in the communication topic. This video is going to be looking at two dot points. Identify accommodation as the focusing on objects at different distances. Describe its achievement through the change in the curvature of the lens and explain its importance, as well as compare the change in refractive power of the lens from rest to maximum accommodation. As we can see in this image, light rays entering the eye from different distances need to be refracted to different degrees to ensure that all the rays fall perfectly on the retina to form a clear and in focus image. So in the first diagram we can see here, if light travels to the eye from a distant source, the light rays tend to be parallel. This means that they do not have to be refracted much in order to pass through the pupil and fall onto the retina. The lens of the eye uh, that can therefore remain in its relaxed and fairly elongated state when viewing distance objects. For distance objects, the curvature of the lens must be relatively flat. The ciliary muscles are relaxed, they hold the suspensory ligaments taut, which are these parts of the eye here. These ligaments pull on the lens, keeping it relatively flat and allowing the image of distant objects to be focused on the retina. However, if light rays travel from a close source, for example, being reflected off an object nearby, the light rays tend to diverge, which means that they spread out. These rays need to be refracted to a greater degree so that they can converge and be directed onto the retina. For this increased refraction of rays, it is necessary for the lens to become rounder, uh, resulting in a focused image forming on the fovea of the retina. The increase in curvature of the lens is brought about by muscle action. For near vision, the curvature of the lens must be increased. A thicker lens has a greater refractive power and therefore a shorter focal length. The ciliary muscles contract, pulling the sclera forward, causing the suspensory ligaments to slacken. As a result, the lens becomes rounder, its curvature increases, refracting the light to a greater degree and allowing a focused image to fall on the retina for viewing near objects. So accommodation is the term used to describe the focusing of objects at different distances brought about by changing the convexity of the lens and as a result its refractive power. This change in the shape of the lens results from the action of the ciliary muscles which in turn affect the tension of the suspensory ligaments that hold the lens. So here we can see again having a look. So we've got our distant light rays from our, our sorry, our parallel light rays from our distant object. Our ciliary muscles are relaxed, our suspensory ligaments are therefore taut, and our lens remains flattened. With close focus, we have our light rays that diverge. The muscles are contracted, so they're tight. That causes the suspensory ligaments to slacken and our lens to become rounder. Okay, so here we can see in the two different uh, types of vision that we have. So in the distant object, the ciliary muscles around the outside of the um, pupil relax, whereas in a nearby object, those muscles contract. Okay, this causes the sensory ligaments to either become tightened or relax themselves as well, which causes the lens to become thicker when looking at nearby objects or thinner when looking at distant objects. So therefore, the refractive power of the lens changes from low in a flattened lens when at rest to high in a rounder lens at maximum accommodation. When a person grows older, the lens loses some of its elasticity and cannot alter its shape easily. There is a tendency for it to remain in its elongated shape with the muscles at rest, resulting in some people becoming long-sighted, which means that they struggle to see close objects when they get older. A way to remember how accommodation works in the eye is by looking at the letters. So when we have close vision, the muscles contract, so therefore C and C, and the lens becomes rounder, which when you compare a C and an F, a C is a much rounder shape than an F. And then for far vision, the lens flattens. So again, F and F, the, the muscles are relaxed. Okay, so an R looks like a little 
So that's just one easy way to have a look at how we can remember how accommodation works. And in class, we'll be doing an investigation to look at how the focal length changes in different uh, lenses using a Raybox kit to model the way that ref refraction and accommodation works in the eye. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.